Hey guys, and welcome to Petrolped. And I think a very, very interesting review. So you should know me by now. I love the Jaguar F-Type. V6 and V8, they make sense to me. But this, this is a four cylinder, two liter Jaguar F-Type. And the question is, is it any good? there are many things to talk about with this 2 litre F-Type and perhaps the first one that everybody will want to know about is what does it sound like? Well from the rear it's easy to spot a 2 litre F-Type, it's just got a single exhaust. The V6 has two exhausts in the middle, the V8 has two either side, so quad exhausts. Um, now we'll get this car on the road shortly and have a good listen. Um, it's not going to sound like a V6 or a V8, that's for sure. And for many, and certainly for me, the whole drama of the F-Type is the noise. It, they just sound brilliant, V6 or V8. Um, they obviously clearly have different characteristics. There's some electronics going on here to make it sound a little bit barky and give you those pops and bangs on overrun. And if you think about it, a, a Focus RS is a four pot, two liter, and uh, you've got 718 Cayman and Boxster with a, with a four pot nowadays. So there's plenty of cars out there with a similar engine configuration. But I think this car's got a real task to sound anything like as good as the V6 or V8. But let's start it up and have a listen. Okay, so there's no doubting it doesn't quite sound as good as a V6 or a V8, but sound isn't everything and we'll get out on the road very shortly because the party piece of this car probably isn't the sound, it's the driving feel. However, one of the things is the interior of this car is 100% F-Type and I, I've always liked the layout of the F-Type inside. It's just a really, really special cockpit. The steering wheel has got a beautiful kind of thick feel to it. You've got the eight-speed ZF gearbox with the uh, paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel, which is really nice and very responsive. <laughs> I just noticed this car has all of 39 miles on the clock, so we probably won't be giving it too much grief. Um, but it's a really, really beautiful place. And if you think, you know, the, the whole premise of this car is to bring the entry point of the F-Type down a little bit in terms of price, um, and also things like uh, the, the fuel economy worries that people might have for the V6 and the V8. Again, that's brought down. This car is some 10 miles per gallon more efficient than a V6 if you go by the officially quoted figures. You're gonna get somewhere in the region of 39 MPG with this car. You get the exterior looks, which let's face it, are still jaw-dropping. This car has a, had a bit of a facelift. Um, uh, and you get this interior that is just very, very special, be it coupe or convertible. So, you know, that for me is the important things about this car. It's that lower entry point, beautiful feeling and looking car. But let's have a chat more about the engine, shall we? Okay, so let's take a look at the engine, accessed by this beautiful clamshell bonnet. So this is Jaguar's two litre petrol ingenium engine, turbocharged. It produces just shy of 300 horsepower and just shy of 300 foot-pounds of torque. But it's much, much lighter and smaller than the V6 and the V8. So that enables us to kind of get the, the, get the engine back a little bit in the engine bay. There's less weight on the front wheels. This car is just rear wheel drive. Uh, the performance figures 
aren't too bad. So you've got a 0 to 60 time of about 5.4 seconds, uh, electronically limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. Uh, and, and as I said already, fuel economy figures of just shy of 40 MPG combined cycle. And kind of that's what this car's all about. But yeah, really, really interesting. Maybe not the drama, but maybe this is the kind of thinking man's F-type. From the outside then, this car is every inch an F-Type and certainly it is from the inside. They really do have a presence about them, these cars, and the interior is always very, very special. But this car is going to either prove to be amazing or prove to be a letdown by its driving. Um, now, the, the performance figures should be good enough. 300 horsepower is a lot of grunt to have in a car. Um, it's just that auditory pleasure, that intangible thing that F-Types bring in heaps and spades, be it V6 or V8, they both, I've driven both and they both sound absolutely amazing. And I, and I think that's where this car might lack, but let's take it up to a few of my favorite roads and just see how good this car feels to drive, because by all accounts, it's a real corker. Now there's some pretty normal F-Type driving stuff in here, standard ZF gearbox. I am going to put it into dynamic mode uh, by this little switch here that automatically turns on the noisy exhaust button. And believe me, this engine needs all the help from the noisy exhaust button it can get. Um, and I'm just going to keep it in the, in the full auto box and just take it for a little bit of a blast up here. So here we go. barky V6 or V8 rumble you get but I have to say it's it's a pretty rapid little car it doesn't have the turn of pace of its bigger brothers but it sounds all right now let's just drop it into the manual box I'm going to push the gear selector to the left I'm in sport mode in the manual box I'm going to grab a paddle or two because it does do a few nice things on the downshift it does some pops and crackles it in and now this is where now that see and out the corner so that's where you get the difference and you got some pops and bangs on overrun there that's where you get the difference the front end of this car is far far more lighter it feels really nimble and really agile I remember I bought the SVR F-Type up this very bit of road which is kind of why I bought it back this way and, and, it, and it, it's a very, very different car. It's a, it's a lighter feeling car, slightly more responsive, direct, pointy front end. And that's where this car, that's its kind of party piece. A lighter, more pointy front end gives for maybe, dare I say, you know, a, a, a nicer feel. It doesn't have the out and out grunt of its bigger brothers. However, in the real world, when do people really get to use those? I'm not so sure, so if we just, and again, those of you who watch my reviews, you will know this bit of road very well. I come down here a lot. It sounds all right, you know. It doesn't have the pops and bangs and crackly bits and the, the sonnet. It's a, a little bit, a little bit dead. Uh, <laughs> But from a, from a handling point of view, from a feel, it really does feel very, very nice.
it's got a really sure-footed, sure-footed feeling. Um, from, from doing my reading, the, the springs have been lightened off just a little bit as well because the car's a bit lighter. So it's just got that slightly more compliant ride and it deals with the bumps really, really well. Yeah, so um, maybe it's starting to make a little bit more sense. Once you get it into a dynamic environment, you start driving it, you start putting it through the corners. It has this really lovely feel about it. Out and out grunt out of corners. You're certainly not, I don't feel intimidated by this car at all. Um, unlike, you know, if you drive the, certainly if you drive the V8 two-wheel drive, it's quite an intimidating car. You've got to be really, really careful. You know, they put a kind of wet snow mode in here for a reason, and that's really for the V8 one. But this one, actually, it's really accessible. Um, you can drive it, and I'm not going that particularly quickly, but it has this really nice response to it. And you can drive it quite hard without going stupid speed. You know, if you drive the, the VAR or, uh, well, as I've driven the SVR, you know, you put your foot down in that, you are going warp speed really, really quickly. This isn't that fast. If you want a fast F-Type, don't buy this car. If you want a car that's, that's pretty quick compared with lots of other things out there, then this is absolutely on the money. Maybe if you were going from a another reasonably sporty coupe, I don't know, like, let's say like an Audi TT coupe and you wanted to upgrade a little bit in terms of, um, you know, of looks and, and dynamic feel and so on, this would be a brilliant, brilliant choice. And if you'd never driven the V6 or the V8, you wouldn't know what I was talking about. You'd basically just think this was a fantastic car. Okay, straight bit of road, 0 to 60, 3, 2, 1. and out 0 to 60 time I wasn't going to set the world on fire um, in terms of speed wise this is this is a quick car and and you know I get very very lucky I'm, I'm, I'm able to drive some really fast cars so therefore my benchmark between what what is a quick car and what isn't kind of is probably a bit a bit higher than most people you know I can I can imagine lots of my family were getting this car and think it's the fastest thing they've ever driven for me it's just not quite got that that turn of speed that feeling of speed that I'd want in a car however it does have a beautiful delicate balance to it a really lovely uh, feel to the driving um, it's maybe not as certainly not as heavy up front and not as cumbersome feeling as the uh, as the larger lump sort of the V the V8 uh, um, F type and I like that that kind of delicate balance feeling is really really nice but for, for out and out grunt and out and out speed and, and smiles per mile uh, not quite there for me this car it does a pretty good job but it just lacks that auditory drama that you get from the v6 and the v8 but i kind of expected that anyway although i still think you could maybe make a little bit more noise out of this car it just when it's on full song it just doesn't it doesn't have a kind of throat to it now there may be an element to that this car's very very new i i on purpose haven't properly um, you know given it the beans today because it's such a new car bless it it's only it's not even done 60 miles you know um, and i don't want to i don't want to thrash it too much so maybe when it opens up and loosens up and the exhaust coats up a little bit maybe it makes a little bit more noise makes an okay noise. Target market for this car though, I think, I'm just gonna put it back into the kind of full auto box. Target market for this car 
is first of all the entry point of this car you know you can get into one of these brand new in the low 50s obviously depending on which options you spec i have to say as having driven the coupe with a panoramic glass roof before you really really want to spec that option if you can afford it it makes a huge difference to the, the, the to this car in terms of the sort of light and airy cabin really really does um, but yeah you can get into this car cheaper than you can the v8 and, and v6 um, it's got a really practical boot so the, certainly the coupe makes it a very very practical car um, and you know and it's got good fuel economy so if you're using this as a daily you wanted something that looked stunning it's certainly gonna draw the crowds and when you arrive somewhere you arrive in style and people are gonna say you know wow what a car um, then then that's absolutely what this car is for if you want to buy the f-type um, and you want the kind of real kind of sporty punch and the fast driving feel that you get from the the v6 and the v8 you're going to be disappointed with this car if you've ever driven one of those and benchmark it against those you, you're probably going to be a bit disappointed in terms of out and out performance but in terms of driving feel you're not you know come to sort of a nice bit of a corner you come in here it's got a really nice balance a nice weight to it and you don't have to really brake very hard and you just drive and accelerate out and it's a really really nice car so uh, my final impressions i kind of just said it really um it, it's it's everything an f-type is bar that that intangible auditory pleasure that you get from an f-type and unfortunately for me that's the bit i really really love about the f-type the styling's beautiful i love looking through that rear view mirror and you can kind of see the haunches um, and the interior is nice the seats are comfortable it's a very very lovely place to be it has that fantastic kind of opulent feel to it the engine's an interesting one it, it's got it's got enough poke it is a pretty quick car what's interesting is you can drive it quite hard but not end up doing stupid speed which i quite like actually um, but it just doesn't quite have the auditory pleasure for me uh, but i do understand why people would buy it anyway I have to say a huge thank you to Harwood's uh, Jaguar of Chichester, um, Andy and the team there for letting me have access to the car. Um, it's a really, really special car. As I said, it's their brand new demonstrator. They're one of the few dealerships in the UK that has a two litre demonstrator currently. So it's brilliant to get to drive one. So thank you for that. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have done so, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. But from the very comfy and, yeah, I like it, from the F-Type 2 litre, I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe.